All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Off the Fence. I'm Finch, and my next guest is passionate about leading others on a path to self-discovery so that they are able to find their voice and walk in their true identity and purpose. When she isn't working on creative projects, she works as an advocate for education and financial literacy, and we're getting one-on-one with her right now. Michelle, welcome. Oh, your 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 mic is muted. You got to unmute your mic. We got you. How are you? How are you? I am fantastic. How are you doing? Wonderful. You look like you in a Hollywood studio. Where you located at? Well, you know, this is my, you know, right now it is, you know, I'm I'm working up to Hollywood. We just we, <laughs> We working on it. We we getting there. <laughs> oh, you, you might not want to be Holly. You might not want to be in Hollywood. Why not? So much evil. That's true. Well, that's Corruption. why they need me there at the light. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh-uh. It's too much darkness there. It'll it'll too consume much your light. Yeah, yeah, it'll consume your your you know you look this little light of mine. No. <laughs> you didn't adapt this. Oh goodness. <laughs> All right, how you doing this evening? I'm doing. I can't complain. Okay. I, I can't complain. I'm just so full of joy. And this talk, man, Diane, like this was a whole divine setup because <laughs> everything that she shared, that's all part of how I found my voice. I don't even need to give any tidbits <laughs> because that was it. I mean, it was amazing. This is, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So I'll start with you. How can a voice that belongs to you be truly lost? Because oftentimes we're talking about finding something, but it belongs to you. So how can you lose it? Well, you're losing it because you you're listening to voices that don't belong to you. Mm. So, you know, me, I was like really stuck inside my head. And so those voices in your head, well, we know who that voice is. <laughs> it, it's, it's not of God. It's not our voice. It's yeah. It's um, and so those were the voices that I was hearing. And so, you know, and I repeated those voices over and over again. Mm-hmm. And and then I believed it because mm-hmm. it just, that was my life where I would just, you know, listen to these shenanigans. And so I knew that that wasn't me because it just didn't feel right. I didn't mm-hmm. feel like myself. I didn't feel like the things that I was hearing was true. It wasn't lining up. Mm-hmm. So I knew that there was a disconnect and I knew I had to dig deep and and find it. Okay. So so make sure I, I understand what you're saying. Um w- when we're talking about because I mean again, you, you when we're looking at finding something, it, ha- it has to be lost for us to find yeah. it. Now, are our voices truly lost or are they just muted? I think they're just muted. <laughs> okay. I think they're muted. Um life experiences, life happens. Um and, and maybe we just, you know, childhood, I know that that's a big piece of it. For me, it mm-hmm. was. I had sus- I'd suppressed a lot of things from my childhood that I never talked about. And uh, my mother, she, she didn't talk. We didn't talk a lot in the house, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would see how she would handle things. And I would say, Mom, like, what's wrong? She'd look sad or down. And, and she'd just say, oh, nothing. And so... I think over the years, that was how I handled my emotions was just, I just bottled everything up on the inside. And so I never discussed my feelings. I didn't talk about how I felt. And so I just got used to that. Hmm. Okay. So, so who, who muted your voice that caused you to champion others utilizing their voices? You know, that's a good question because mm. I remember when I was younger, always wanting to be heard and talk. And I went to a performing arts high school. And I mean, even going into like college, I considered myself an extrovert. Mm-hmm. But um, 
it was when I found myself in social situations and around people was when I realized that I'm not as comfortable in my skin as I thought. Mm -hmm. And that's back to the voices (laughs) that I was hearing in my head and that negative self-talk telling me that, you know, uh, you shouldn't belong in this room or you, you know, you're not the person that you think you are and just, just tearing myself down on the inside. And so it just made me basically, I, I don't know. I wasn't the person who I thought I was, I, I guess. I don't know. And what led you to that? Cause something or somebody caused that in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that. Um, so when I was speaking about my mom, so we didn't have like a really close relationship. Um, and so I didn't really know that that really bothered me though. Um, Mm -hmm. until I was an adult, there were things that I just didn't know, like as a woman, like, you know, my moms are supposed to like teach their daughters things. And there were a lot of things that I I learned from my aunt and my grandmother, but Mm -hmm. I didn't have that connection with my mom. And so that's how I didn't know it really bothered me because I had such a huge support system in my family that I didn't realize that that was that was something that was really, really affecting me. And it was affecting the woman that I was growing into. And I, I didn't even really acknowledge it until I was well into my thirties. And so, and I think that that, you know, I guess I'll go ahead and share. This is a safe space. So this is the reason I was sitting here like, she going to continue to sit on this fence. I'm going to have to cry a little bit harder. I thought he was going to say that. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. We all, you know, we all family now. So there you go. Let's hear it. So in high school, so in high school, I think it was my junior year. Mm -hmm. I got into a fight. I was jumped by, it was guys and girls. It was like, it was like, yeah, they all, and I was like skinny mini at the time. I was like, they could have really hurt me. And I can remember the guy, I mean, he was like punching me. I was like Mm -hmm. jumped. My, My best friend at the time, she jumped in and helped. Had she not, I could have been really, really hurt. Well, long story short, my mom, she did not, um, you know, I didn't feel like she was there for me. Like we could have pressed charges and we could have, you know, done things to to rectify the situation, but she didn't like take up for me in a way. And so I kind of felt, I guess I felt like, you know, you're not going to stand up for me. Mm. And so as I grew older, I just had that in my mind that, my opinions that it doesn't matter. My feelings don't matter. No one's going to stand up for me. And so I didn't speak up for myself. I didn't set boundaries. I didn't, you know, I I allowed things that happen that should have in relationships. And so what did I do? I was working so hard to not be my mom that I was still being her anyway. I was still shutting people out. I was still not expressing myself and not you know, sharing things. And so um, it was just a a long journey for self-discovery, just every year, just trying to figure out like, what's going on with me? I'm feeling these things. I I feel lost. I feel stuck. I feel um, like I'm not fulfilled and something's holding me back. And Mm. I think I had to just get to the root. And I think that that was the root of it all. And once I identified that, then I was able to move forward and be able to create an opportunity to work on self. I had to work on self. I had to stop blaming and stop saying, oh, well, it was my mom or, oh, he hurt me or he did this. You know, I always had a a finger to point, you know, to someone. I had to just kind of use this time to just focus on me. Mm. And, um, and so that's kind of how I got on the path to finding my voice. And ironically, Diane, we have similar stories with the MBA program. So, well, mine was an MBA. Um, one of the ways that I was able to really get into finding my voice was I had to confront my fears. And so I was always like, I hated math. Hated, hated, hated math. When I was in college, I saved all the math classes for last Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to tell you, like I flunked like several times, this is algebra, algebra two or calculus. I don't know, but Mm -hmm. I hated math. And I always told myself, well, you know what? I'm not a math person. I just, I don't want to, you know, I'm just not going to do anything related to math. 
And so it was um, when I got into corporate America, that was obviously a problem because you got reports, mm. you got things. And I was so afraid of numbers. Mm. And so to overcome that fear, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to graduate school. I didn't even look at the course catalog. I was mm. like, I want I want the program that has the most math. <laughs> I said, I want finance. I want statistics. I, you just give me everything numbers. And so mm. I ended up doing an MBA with a minor in energy finance. And mm. that's what made me overcome that fear of, you know, of numbers and math. And I got A's. I got A's throughout the whole program. And I was like, I was so fearful though. I was so scared, but I, I just trusted God throughout the whole process. And he just, mm. and I just did it. And when I did that, I was like, well, shoo, I can do some other stuff. And then, mm. then I began to just dig deep inside and find other things that I, you know, was, was fearful of, you know? Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, in today's, in the now time, mm -hmm. do you still struggle with your voice? With the voice that you have, I'm not. I'm not talking about the physical voice, but yeah. you feel you feeling like you have a voice in the current life that you have, um, or is that something you still wrestle with in, in, in some aspects of your life? This has been, um, you you don't just find your voice and oh, you, that's it. It's a process. I'm mm -hmm. at least that's my process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, back to the the thing with my mom, I was so in a rush to jump into adulthood. So I got married really, really young. I got mm -hmm. married when I was like 21 years old. I wanted to just be a wife and be out of my mom's house and have my own family and all of that. And so I really lost a sense of identity. I, I didn't really know who I was yet. And I was mm. trying to be a wife and all these things and wear all these different hats. And so mm. that was another opportunity where um, I didn't, you know, allow myself to really speak and, and, and step into the woman that, you know, I was becoming, I just kind of, it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to be a wife and I'm just going to be a, you know, a mom. And, and I, I knew that there was more though. Mm -hmm. I knew there was more. And so fast forward to, you know, recently I'm like, God, I, I love my kids. And, and I just, I know there's more to me than marriage. I know there's more to me than being a mom and just please, like, I really want it to be fulfilled. I wanted more. I wanted to walk in my purpose. And so I realized that in marriage over the years, I was so into the marriage and I just buried my own passions. I buried, you know, the things that I, you know, wanted to do. I, I love acting. Um, there's, there's, I wanted to get into creative projects, but I just didn't know how to do it all. And mm -hmm. One of the fears that I had was that if I tried to do it all, I would fail because I was I was I was failing. <laughs> I was failing miserably. I, I was trying to wear all these different hats. I was being a people pleaser. I was trying to, you know, do all these things. But because I wasn't working on myself mm -hmm. and because I wasn't putting in the work to to work on what was going on on the inside, then everything else was a struggle. Okay. Okay. So are you still on the fence? So you you, oh, you feel you like you, <laughs> you, you off I, the fence. I feel like I feel like I am definitely off the fence. I feel hmm. okay, like 80, 85%. Okay, 85% off the that's fence. Kind of hot, Michelle. 80 <laughs> I, I think you padding them numbers a little bit. No, seriously. I because it's a choice. It's a cho it's a choice. It's a choice of of being on the fence or off it. Off the fence. It's a choice. And oh. the the choice for me, the choice that I had to make was I had to choose me. I had to choose me. I had to say, you know what? It's okay to ask for help. Okay. It's okay to, you know, I mean, I was like really struggling at one point where I was like um dealing with some depression. I just, mm -hmm. I just really 
when I was on the path to self-discovery, I thought that I couldn't do all of these different things. So I was just like, I don't want none of it. Just throw the whole marriage away. I don't want it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but then when I, did, but when I realized when I got off the fence, when I chose me and I saw that, you know, self-care is important. Soul mm -hmm. care, definitely at the top of the list. Um, and really just the personal and professional development and, and things to, to work on me to edify my spirit. Once I began to do those things and, and make a commitment to do that, then everything else was, there was a balance. There mm -hmm. was, you know, there was a balance there. Okay. So I want, let's, let's give the people the secrets and recipes to finding their voice first, and then I'm going to help you. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Well, yeah. definitely. Number one, I mean, inner courage. Okay. Because inner courage is something that if you don't have it, you have to ask God for it because that is going to help you face those fears. Though That could be the very thing that's really holding you back from walking into your purpose. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't want to face my fears because I didn't even want to admit that I was doing it all wrong. Like I had mm -hmm. this, it was this thing like performance was tied to my worth. Like if I wasn't performing in all of these different roles and all of these different areas, and if I didn't have it all together, that was tied to my worth. But the inner courage allowed me to look inside myself to say, no, you don't actually have it all together, but you can get help. And you're not, that doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. you know? And so the inner courage allowed me to actually get out of my head and actually listen to the voice that is true. Actually listen to the things that, you know, are true and, you know, not all of this other crazy stuff that I was listening to. Okay. Having inner courage. Okay. Yes. What's the next one? So the next one is really, you have to get to the root of um, why you're feeling the way you're feeling. So it, I, I feel like I, I, this is kind of bad. I mean, but it shouldn't have taken me this long to realize that I had issues. <laughs> with, Why, not? Why not? I don't know. I just feel like I should have known. I should have, but I, I, I didn't never have anyone to really talk to about like therapy and mental health. I just, I was well, so busy just trying to just have it together that I just, I felt like I should have gotten to the root quicker, but that didn't happen. So mm -hmm. I think the sooner that you can just really get to the root of, because sometimes you just really don't know why you feel bad. You don't know why you feel stuck. Um, mm -hmm. But the, like Diane said, the soul searching and, mm -hmm. you know, time alone, isolation to get rid of the noise and reduce the distractions. That's definitely a must mm -hmm. to find your voice. Um, you know, you have to get rid of the noise and, and sometimes isolate yourself. Okay. So, okay. Let's go with the next one. So the next one is, you know, sometimes we tell ourselves things, um, we miss opportunities because we just, we, we tell ourselves that we just can't do it. We tell ourselves mm -hmm. that, you know, I got into voiceover um, because I told myself, well, I'm too old to act and, and actually have a professional career in acting. So I'm just going to hide behind the camera and I'm just going to be a voiceover artist. Mm -hmm. And that was because I, I, I didn't have the confidence in myself. And so I just said, OK, I'm going to I was definitely on the fence, but I, I'm going to just, you know, take this gift and I'm, I'm going to just hide behind the camera and I'm going to be comfortable mm -hmm. here. And I'm not, you know, and mm -hmm. um, so you just have to be able to reverse, you know, reverse the negative self-talk and anything that you're saying that you can't do, do the opposite. Learn something new, read more books, get a coach, get, you know. I don't care how I wish I could afford a coach for every area in my life. I would have one. I'm telling you, because we just we need that. We just mm. we need that. That's the, that that growth, that personal development is the only way that you are going to get out of your head 
and really have the confidence that you need, the God confidence, that confidence from within that's going to allow you to find your voice and walk in these different areas that that you know you didn't ever think you could walk into. What if people don't believe in the God you're talking about? You're saying they can't have the confidence if they don't believe in the God you be, you believe in? You said, what if they don't believe? Yeah, what if they don't believe in the God that you're talking about? The, are you saying that they can't develop the confidence that they need if they well, don't believe in that? They God? can believe. They can believe. They can make a choice to believe in themselves. Um, like I mm-hmm. like. I mean, I had to literally make a choice and say, you know what? Like I, I would always say, oh, I'm not creative. Mm-hmm. And I asked God. I cried out to God one day, and I said, you know. I really, you say I'm made in your image, but I, I, I really suck at creativity. I don't feel creative and I need answers. So can you please show me what you see? Because I, I'm lacking a little creativity here. And so, mm-hmm. but that unlocked something because mm-hmm. once, once I asked, then all of these creative outlets happen and all door after door open. And I began to believe it. I began to believe that I actually am creative. Like, whoa, wait a minute. And mm-hmm. when I, it's funny when I tell other people that they're like, really, why are you saying you're not creative? Like you like one of the most creative people. And I'm like, no, I, I didn't believe it. So it's, it's, yeah, you can, you have to make the choice to believe it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now here on off the fence, it's called off the fence with Finch for a reason. I know. Um, <laughs> uh, for very long, you know, in the first couple of seasons of our show, it was more so about the guests helping the audience get off their fences. And then we realized that a lot of the guests themselves were on fences, and who was going to help them get off? Mm, in, mm. In, in come this guy. Uh, and so, oftentimes when I chat with guests like yourself i see things sometimes things come to me before the show sometimes it comes to you doing the show and when i see things oftentimes i'm like okay i can see this okay Um, so when it comes to you would you say you are authentic you know what um yeah i am now i wasn't at first because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And so that was how I came to finding my voice because, you know, I was like holding so much on the inside that I didn't Mm -hmm. want to see people or I didn't want people to see me hurting. I didn't Mm -hmm. want people to see me unsure. I didn't want people to see me with anxiety, you know? So, Mm -hmm. but now when you find your voice, you have to own everything. You have to own your story. You have to own your insecurities. You mm-hmm. and now I can be in any room. I don't care what who it is, doctors, lawyers, whatever. I I feel like I belong everywhere. And if I don't know something, I don't know it. Then okay. I'm open and ready to learn. And okay. so, you know, but before I found my voice, that would be a very uncomfortable situation to be in a room where I felt like I couldn't add value or I, I didn't fit in, you know? <laughs> that's, clip, that's Clubhouse talk. Yeah. <laughs> clubhouse, right. Clubhouse talk. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that, that was real. That was real. But now I have no problem saying, yeah, this, I'm struggling right now in this area. Like I can admit that. So now you don't care. You don't care what people think about you. No, I, I, I absolutely do not care what people think no. about me. You don't care any doubts. In certain areas, I do. But so you, when it comes carry, to people, you do carry doubt. Well, but not about people's opinions, though. It's 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 like self self doubt in some areas. Like, look, God is still working on me. Okay, I ain't arrived. <laughs> God but when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to people's opinions, no, I don't mm-hmm. care. But when it comes to like me and, and certain things that I want to accomplish, sometimes it is a little scary. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, you know, but I'm, that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. Mm. So you still doubt yourself quite a bit. I'm work. I wouldn't say quite a bit, Finch, now. But yes, sometimes. What, what percentage of doubt would you say? <laughs> you really got me in the hot seat. 
But, but, because um, yeah, but here's the thing, right? When you say I wouldn't say <laughs> quite a bit, <laughs> that, that would that would mean it's a small percentage of doubt. But we both know that's not true. I would say, ooh, okay, half of the time, fifty percent. Fifty percent. I you know fifty percent. I'm like, eh, but I push through it. I push through it, and that's why I'm constantly. That's why the coaches are important in reading and and my and my my faith journey and just my relationship with God is so important because I need to that's not of God. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not I don't want to have that doubt, but yes, I can admit that half the time I'm like, oh God, I just this is I'm nervous. I don't know about this. Now you see when I said you doubt quite a bit, you said no, nah, I wouldn't say quite a bit. Well, look at that, you have fifty percent. <laughs> That's a lot, huh? 50%. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. lot. Yeah, that's quite a bit. So I'm on the fence then, basically. What you, you said. are on the fence. I'm on the fence. Well, help yeah. me. Help me get off the fence. I'm trying. You not let me help you right now. <laughs> you try. You try and defend your stand because you, you know you you want to stand in that. I I found my voice, and the truth of the matter is, you found you found a vocal cord. <laughs> oh God, yeah. You know, yeah. there's a difference. You, you have it's, it's, and see, here's the thing. I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. Yeah, it's not. I would encourage you to lose the term "find your voice" because your voice wasn't lost; it was just mm-hmm. muted. So you didn't have to find it because you own it. It you possess it. It's in you. It's right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but when it comes to how you maneuver through life, yeah, you've oftentimes utilized things. And even in some cases, probably earlier in your life, people to shield and what's the word I'm looking for? In a some in, in a sense, become a protectant. So like yeah. like yeah. You, you 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 act not saying you don't love it, you know, but you act and do voiceover because that allows you to unmute the voice on the inside of you that you want to project to people because Mm -hmm. at a time in your life, you wasn't protected by people. And so now you have this thing about yourself where your voice has to be heard. Not that you like, you need to be seen, but your voice has to be heard because you felt muted for a Mm -hmm. very long time and unprotected. And so you're on these quests for all these different things to achieve because it gives you credence to the fact that you have a voice because you have told yourself and convinced yourself you lost it when in fact it was just muted right okay that makes sense yeah you done came out your glasses i, I you know <laughs> yes because you I'm, I'm getting off this fence so it's getting serious <laughs> yeah 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 so. but, but here's the thing like you know when you when you look at your life and you you look at where you want to go mm-hmm. and the ingredients you'll need to include in, in this, this dish that we're cooking to, in order to get there so that we have the spread that we desire. We got to look at the areas that we not, we're not willing to acknowledge that exist, even when we've arrived or accomplished certain things. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not my goal to injure you or to hamper you from getting there. My goal is to see the things that you need and assist you along the way. You know, I'm your I'm your your wingman. Throw me the ball. I'm gonna throw you the ball so you can shoot and and get it and get the points you need in your life. But I've learned in helping people and you are in that field where you're looking to help people and help champion their causes and help and helping them unmute their voices. You yourself got to be able to recognize these er- areas in your life because those are blind spots. For yeah. You, you yeah. know, you got some blind spots that you have to see that's going to help you be successful in several facets of your life. The areas that you've been lacking all this time. And although you have unmuted a vocal cord or two, the overall depiction of your voice still isn't being heard because you're not really being authentic and you still doubt yourself quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can stop me when I start lying, Michelle. Oh gosh. You know, that's, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. Of course, because I ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, it, it's, um, it's hard when you're trying to, I know for me, the, the whole balance thing was very real. Mm-hmm. And 
again, because I tied the whole performance to my to my worth, I just felt like, God, if I can't get this right and now I can't get this right, I just like suck as a human. Like, I was feeling bad and I wanted to be able to really have the balance so that I can, you know, thrive and, you know, and, and walk fully in my purpose. But it's a process. It's not it's not just overnight, you know. And so um, well, it's not overnight. Where did you get that from? That it's it's process. not. It is not. It's not now wait, overnight. The, the, now wait a minute. Now, the God you believe in, word said, is quick and powerful. So why it is, is it a process? That's true. That's true. I, I don't. I don't ever recall the God you serve uh, having a process of 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 things. I do believe when, and I'm assuming. Correct me if I'm wrong. The God you serve is, is, is Jesus, right? Yes. Okay. I don't recall Jesus going anywhere and there was a process for a man who didn't have sight to see. I think he saw right away. Did he not? He saw right away. Yeah, he did. I, I don't think there was somebody <laughs> who was dead. It was a process for them to come back to life. I think they kind of came back to life right away, right? Not a process. It's just what we've told ourselves to keep ourselves in a certain place being stuck. Yeah. So what you have to do is change your your mindset which changes what goes in your heart which changes what comes out of your mouth and looking at where you are and being uh, being honest like being honest because you said it yourself you've utilized a number of things to assist you and those things haven't worked you ever thought about this you invested in the wrong things yeah 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 yeah. So what we have to do is help you discover the right areas of, of your life to invest in so that you maximize and you operate at optimal. That's the key. Right, That's the right, key right. to getting off the fence and staying <sighs> off the fence. And here's the thing about fences, guys. There could be different fences, different areas of a fence that you're sitting on. And so when you hop off one, that don't mean you don't hopped off all of them. Now you got to hop off the next one and the next one and the next one. And that's how you continuously grow. And that's how you learn. And every time you, you learn, you should grow. And every time you grow, you should learn. Yeah, I received that. Yeah, I received that. This is why they pay me the big bucks, Michelle. I uh, know. I know. <laughs> So we're going to help you get off the fence in, in life. So because uh, I want to see you be the best version of yourself um, yeah. that you can be. And I always believe in getting the best that's already in people, out of people. People think, oh, I got I'm not good enough. Or I'm not great at this. And the truth of the matter is you're good and you're great at a host of things. But no one's ever shown you the best that's in you and helping you get that out of you. Mm. So we got to get that for you, Michelle, Virginia. Yes. <laughs> you didn't call me my government name. Okay. It's right here on the screen. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, Michelle. So how can people connect with you online if they want to do so? So um, my IG is um, Michelle underscore unveiled. And then you can also go to my website, michelleunveiled.com. Okay, MichelleUnveiled.com. Uh, you going to be performing anywhere soon or any uh, shows coming up that you we need to be what? aware of? I, um, I did audition yesterday, and so I'm waiting to see about that. And um, I do have a couple of other projects coming up, which they can find on my Instagram. <laughs> okay, so your project's on your Instagram, and if they want to connect with you, they can go to your website and look at all the wonderful things you're doing. Yes. All right. All right, Michelle. Well, thank you for coming on the fence. Hopefully we didn't offend you. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> and uh, it's been a pleasure having a conversation with you and you are welcome back here. Anytime. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.